Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2Design. The quest for 2D look in 3D animation has never been so popular. I recently had the chance with my friend from Atypic Studio to work on the concept trailer where we tried to achieve convincing Western anime style using Blender. To me, there are five key components to achieve a good 2D look. But before I reveal them, I'd like to let you know that you can now find me on Blue Sky, you will find the link in the description below. All right, let's get started. Before anything moves, we've got to achieve a good look. It obviously goes through a good modeling and we can count on my friend Anthony for that. He sculpted and modeled the two characters for this short from the customer's concept. And you may already know his work as he also did Kibali for my rigging course in Blender, the Art of Effective Rigging 2nd Edition. We used a low to mid poly retopology to make them easier to rig and animate and bake the textures from the high poly model. We generally make stylized PBR look like Overwatch involving the classic metallic roughness shading method. But for this specific shot I asked him to paint simple solid colors with a very slight gradient from top to bottom. No shadows or light variations at all. Then we added some line work directly in the texture to mark the main folds of the cloth and skin and added some scratches to the blade. The shader I created for the two characters is super simple. It's just the diffuse color mixed with a shadow pass. To get sharp shadows, I used the normal map baked from the eye poly model, plugged in a white diffuse shader, converted it to RGB and multiplied it on the base color. Then, for each shot, I will use a simple sun lamp and play with its orientation to get the best effect possible. Part of the line work was on the texture, but we also used Blender Line Art Modifier. To generate it, add a grease pencil object and give it a Line Art Modifier. Then, you have to target the object or collection you want the line art to be generated from. If your line art thickness is not consistent, depending on the distance of your character from the camera, it might look 3D. You can use weights to create a thickness falloff based on the target distance from any other object, and in that case, the camera. I also used the custom profile for the line art to bring some randomness in the thickness making it a little more organic and natural. If you're enjoying this content so far, please consider giving it a like, dropping a nice comment and subscribing. If you want your shots to look 2D, you want to get rid of 3D depth and the best way is to use the same method used in old school animated movies. I used flat backgrounds and I will animate their position and scale to match the framing or camera movement. In most anime from the 80s, backgrounds were made out of one painting, sometimes a couple, painting at different speed to fake parallax. But these are all 2D painting. I did use 3D models created by Kevin Fournier to create the base of the background. But then I painted over it in Photoshop to get a more hand-painted look. I'm sure you've seen a lot of anime or animation that try to look 2D but definitely look 3D. Most of the time, the main problem is the camera work, not the 3D models. If you look at this shot, the rendering is not 2D-like, but it feels 2D. You have again to think about the limitations from 2D animated content. The camera can't really travel in space. You can fake rotation of the camera with panning. You can zoom in and out. Here, I'm zooming in and out, and there, I'm just scaling up and down a static image. There is no visual difference in the end. But as soon as I start changing the location of the camera, it feels like 3D. This is why on that shot, but also on the content I made for Nike or Rainbow Six, the camera wasn't moving at all. Any camera shakes or reframing was made in composition on the flat 2D renders. If you want to learn animation, rigging and much more in Blender, discover my extensive courses on p2designacademy.com. 
learn actual professional techniques, or enjoy all my exclusive free character rigs only on p2designacademy.com. If you're making animated content, animation is key to define the style. You probably all know that on a lot of anime, while the frame rate is generally 24 frames per second, we almost never make 24 drawings for one second of animation. To save time and budget, we generally create a new drawing every 2, 3, 4 frames, and often enough, even more. This is what we call animating on 2s, 3s, 4s, etc. 3D allows you to fill the gap with interpolations. So if we want it to look 2D, we don't want to use those interpolations. And we don't want to create a pose every frame. We sometimes animate on ones when the motion is very fast to keep track of it, but whenever it's possible, we may animate on twos, threes, or fours. This stepped style is very popular now. Since we're using a static camera, if we want to force the perspective, it's better or easier to do it on the character. Forcing perspective is very common in any 2D art, whether it's cartoons, anime, manga, or comics. It's part of the exaggeration process that makes your art more appealing. So I'm basically sculpting the pose of my character to the camera as if I was drawing it. If the fist is close to the camera, I make it bigger. I can also scale down the fit to exaggerate the depth and get a more dynamic pose. By the way, to save time on that production, we'll rig the characters with Rigify and some custom mechanism on top of it. Finally, I love to use smears to connect fast-moving features from one frame to another. Another benefit of animating to a static camera is that we can retime the animation without having to sync the camera and characters, exactly as if it's done in 2D animation. You just draw the characters, and this tells the audience the position of the camera, the focal length, etc. VFX and compositing are also a key component. Here you can take two paths. Try to achieve a 2D look with 3D VFX and cool shaders, and my buddies at Dylan Goo Studio are toward the best at it. Or you can use hand-drawn VFX. What better way to get a 2D look than 2D itself? All the VFX of the short were hand-drawn, which take quite a lot of time, but I love the result. Also, I had the chance to have my friend Nicolaus Finizio working on the key VFX, the dark flames, adding the cherry on the cake of that piece of animation. Compositing, I faked an older animated series look by adding a bit of blur, a camera grain, and some chromatic aberrations. And this is how it was all done. This is the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it.